first ever podcast. Um, I was thinking about making a series of podcasts for a while now, and I was like, what better moment to start uh, making these podcasts than today? And the whole idea behind the series of podcasts is to live a more happy life, to share ideas that are helping me in my life. And I was like, maybe it resonates with other people and it can help other people. Um, This first podcast is about getting over the fear of social rejection, which uh, is my biggest fear. Uh, I experienced an anxiety disorder for four years. So for me, it was even worse. It it happens to be everyone's biggest fear unless you have some kind of... um, phobia for like uh, let's say a snake uh the the fear of social rejection is something very deeply rooted in every human being and for myself i wanted to get over that fear of social rejection which is what i'm doing right now and i'm going to talk about how i'm doing it and maybe you can apply that to and really uh like don't live in uh, not live in fear anymore and just fully show yourself and not not hiding from life, not letting yourself be stopped by these invisible chains of fear. So everyone's biggest fear is the fear of social rejection. <clears throat> um, I ask myself the question, how does it impact me negatively in my life? How does it impact us negatively in our lives? And this differs per person. But I can give you a couple of examples. For example, your love life. For me now, I'm single. I started dating like a year and a half ago. And uh, where I, when I was in my 20s, I'm 36 now, I can just go to university and meet girls there in a very organic way, or I went to a bar. But now I'm in a position where I'm done with university for a while, <clears throat> for a long time. Um, I don't feel like going to the bars anymore, so how do I meet women? And someone said, try online dating. I tried it. For me, it's a very unnatural way of, of, of meeting women. Uh, for millions of years, we've never met each other uh, this way. I want to see a woman from the first second. I just want to see her in real life, look, uh, being able to look in her eyes, read her body language and all that stuff. So uh, I skipped online dating and I was like, what can I do? Like I can go um, approach girls in real life. But the fear of social rejection was stopping me. Like it, it, it impacts us so much, the fear of social rejection, that we cannot just approach someone in real life And with real life, I mean just uh, in the supermarket, at the train station, wherever you may be, in a store. And this shouldn't, I I, I told myself, this should be a basic human skill I need to have down. Actually, I think everyone needs to have down. When you see someone outside and you like them, you should be able to just walk up to them. It's how we reproduce. It's how men and women have come together for millions of years. Man sees woman, approaches her. Or if you're a woman, you can also do it. Like, what is stopping you? The whole idea of, like, maybe women are not supposed to do that. I mean, like, so much has changed now. Like, I don't I don't agree with the whole idea. Like, what, what does that even mean, not supposed to do that? You can do whatever you want. So I advise women to do that, too. But let's go back to the, to the first point of this podcast. Is like, in our love life, the fear of social rejection uh, impacts us negatively. We can't even walk up to someone we like on the street and just have a chat and see if they're uh, interested too. Uh, in the area of friendships too. Like basically what it comes down to is this. We leave our love life and, fr- and, and uh, uh, the, the friendships uh, up to chance. We leave it up to chance. Like th- this is most people's attitude and this was my attitude too. Like okay, I'm going to see what accidentally is going to come on my path, which is often not really what I want. And then, then I'm going to settle with that for that because I don't have any other option. Like, is that really, that's considered normal. And I was like, I want to change that. But uh, other areas where uh, the fear of social uh, rejection is uh, impacting our lives negatively is, for example, work. <clears throat> you could be the person that is always like in the background hiding like okay when is this meeting over when is this lunch break over and what is really stopping you from really showing yourself fully i'm really talking about fully is is uh the fear of social rejection so that once you get rid of that you will absolutely transform your life you'll transform your life from that shy person or relative shy person um in comparison with what it could be 
to someone who just goes out, says hi to everyone at the meeting, is very present, sells their ideas. Um, another area where it can impact you or stop you from doing what you want, the, f the, the fear of social rejection, is maybe starting your own business. Starting something for, for yourself, for, for example, it could be a podcast like this, where you don't do it. Why? I can guarantee you, when it comes to doing what you want and you don't do it because of fear, I can guarantee you, guarantee you the main fear is the fear of social rejection. Once you get rid of that, you'll just do everything. Um, let's go to the second point, which is also uh, a huge point. Um, if you look at social media, like the more we try to be liked, the less genuine we will be. So the more we're in the grip of that fear of social rejection, like people are not going to like me. And you see it on social media all the time. Like people try so hard to be liked, like seeking validation from everyone, needing to be liked by everyone is an endless hamster wheel you're on. You're always a slave to that. I need to be liked. I need to be liked. I need to be liked. And... For me, a better alternative is just to... But what also happens is when you have a fear of social rejection and you really need to be liked by everyone, you lose integrity. You find yourself changing what you want to say. You find yourself laughing at maybe jokes you don't find funny. You're not yourself. If you compare yourself with how you are with your parents uh, and f with other people, it's completely different. Like, you should always actually be yourself with anyone you need you don't need to change yourself completely when you're at work for example like you can just be yourself to to a certain extent of course some things you say to your parents you cannot say at work because you may lose your job okay be socially calibrated when it comes to this um but the the goal is to get rid of the whole fear of social uh, rejection that is my whole the whole idea i want to talk about here in this podcast and to live a more authentic life and when people don't like you to be fine to not get angry because what most people do now is like when someone doesn't like them they get angry they like they they feel themselves how can i explain this um your image suffered there so for example someone says hey i don't like you because of this reason and you feel your image dim diminishing so you get angry and you fire back but a more for me a more better way to to go in about this is when someone doesn't like you, you say okay that's your opinion and then you can just go on like my whole philosophy is this no one can make you insecure about something you're not insecure about yourself that is the whole idea so if anything if someone doesn't like you for a cer certain reason and it bothers you that means to some degree you think they're right so the whole goal is to really um embrace who you are here too <clears throat> now let's go to the third point which is a very fascinating one i ask myself why is my fear for social rejection way out of proportion in relation to how significant that rejection uh, is going to be because if you look at it rationally objectively what is a how significant is a, a rejection by one, five, ten, even hundred people out of the billion? It isn't. Like you, you shouldn't care. But where this fear comes from? I googled this, and I will read you a a a little part here. Um, as clever as human beings are, we rely on social groups for survival. This was like how people lived for millions of years in the past. We evolved to live in cooperative societies. And for most of human history, we depended on those groups for our lives, like hunger or thirst. Our need for acceptance emerged as a mechanism for survival. So in the old days, social rejection was a life and death matter. Okay, I will continue reading. A solitary human being could not have survived during the six million years of human evolution while we were living out there on the African savanna. <clears throat> so in other words, th this, is, this is clear enough. For, for millions of years in the past, like we are the way we are. We are the result of millions of years of evolution. And in the old days, people lived in relative small communities and a social rejection could result in, in, in them not being a part of that community anymore. And they didn't have the resources to, to like get water, get food, everything they need to survive. So it can result in their, in their death. 
And basically this fear is passed down, but now we live in a completely different society. We live in a modern society where we don't really need other people other than maybe some social support from friends, maybe some support from our parents. But other than that, think about it. Who do you really need? So how significant is that rejection really? So I came to the conclusion that we actually looking at how, at how society is now, the fact that we really don't need people, and I don't see this changing anytime soon, we need to evolve out of that to get the, the fear of social rejection at the same level uh, of how significant it is. And the, the way I did it, I started Googling and I came across this uh, TED talk by Jia Zheng. And he was talking about his own story. He wanted to have an own company and get really big with it. But every time he got a rejection, he just felt defeated. So he was like, okay, I need to uh, desensitize myself from rejection. And then he came across rejectiontherapy.com. Um, this website, it's not like you're going to talk with a psychologist and they're going to help you with it. No, they just basically offer you information and a challenge you can do and set up yourself where every day you go out and seek rejection. So eventually you desensitize yourself to that rejection, to the, the fear of that rejection. And that is basically uh, uh, with all fears. If you, It doesn't matter what fear you have. The way to get over it is basically expose yourself to it, experience it, and do it in your own way. Start small, and which is what I'm doing right now, and build it up. Otherwise, it can feel overwhelming. And what Jia Zheng did is uh, do a 100-day challenge of rejection. So he wrote down things to do every day to seek reten uh, rejection and uh, it, it was things like he, uh, very funny things it's it's on youtube if you google him jia jeng like j i a and then his last name is j i a n g if you google him on youtube you will see uh, uh videos of him uh, getting those rejections <clears throat> and he did a 100 day challenge and it, for example one of his challenges was he he went to the dominoes and asked like hey when you get an order can i deliver your pizza to that person and keep the tips now obviously they said no and another thing he did he went into a hotel and said can i stay here for a free night and usually people like laugh when he says that because it's so ridiculous and obviously they're going to say no surprisingly some people said yes he went to the Krispy Kreme Krispy Kreme is like one of the best donuts in, uh, in the US, US I live in the Netherlands by the way so I don't know how good it is but I've heard a lot of people really liking those donuts so it's a store Krispy Kreme so th for for that day his rejection challenge was ask them ask them um, if they can make a box of uh, donuts in, in the symbol of the Olympic symbol, like like the Olympic symbol. And surprisingly, the manager was so nice. If you hear some noise in the background, sorry, by the way, I'll just keep going. But surprisingly, the manager was <clears throat> took it so serious. And she said, like, sure, like, sure, let me Google this. And she actually made it. She actually made the donuts uh, in the in the symbol of the Olympics. So sometimes, surprisingly, you don't get rejections. But the goal here is to have rejections. So uh, that is basically what I'm doing. For me, um, I told I asked myself like, what is my biggest fear after experiencing uh, anxiety disorder? For me, it was, which is, in my opinion, a, a very big fear for a lot of guys is to be rejected by a woman when I have uh, when I'm interested in her romantically. That was like one of my biggest fear. So I was like, what I'm going to do is not like a 100 day challenge where I go to the Domino's ask like, can I uh, deliver your pizza for you? Because that feels like less fearful for me than what I'm doing now. What I'm doing now is I want to be uh, rejected by women because I'm single. And since like a year and a half, I'm looking uh, to date women. So let me have a sip of coffee. So what I'm doing is like I'm going to the city. I'm starting off very small again. I'm starting off with eye contact, but I've come to experience or realize that a lot of people can't even do that. Like a lot of people can't even like look long, like 
a lot of people can't show their interest in the person non-verbally with like their facial expression, body language. Like you can look in a way, not in a creepy way, in a way like, wow, she's really beautiful. And she can pick up on that. That's basically what I'm thinking. And she picks up on that non-verbally. So that's what I'm doing. Every woman I find interesting uh, and I really want to date and get to know, I just look at her and I just, I just non-verbally, I keep, keep looking in a normal way. And, and she will pick up on the fact that I like her. And then I smile. That's what I do. Like I look, I smile. And sometimes you see my mouth moving. Like I really find her beautiful. I say like, wow. I don't say it out loud, but you can see my mouth mo moving. And then she, and like some, sometimes I get rejections. Surprisingly, I don't get a lot of rejections. A lot of women like uh, like like that, uh, me doing that. It's really weird because it's a huge compliment. Some Someone genuinely has interest in you and finds you wow-like <laughs> um, attractive. But I do get rejections and sometimes very horrible ones. For example, um, um, I got this girl. She was way younger. Um, I, I got this girl that said reacted like, ew. She said, ew. And as if I was this this monster from Lord of the Rings, and even a monster from Lord of the Rings can get a very hot girl. You will, you will find that all, there will always be really attractive, awesome girls that would be into however you look and however you are. But she reacted like ew, uh, uh, and sometimes I just the woman reacts very negatively, looks angry. But then I'm like, okay, this the the fear. Every time I experience that, the fear becomes less and less and less. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me have another sip. So that's how I'm starting off. And I'm also having just small talk with everyone talking about talking about everything I wanted. Just I literally everyone I just gonna have a, a, a talk with. Uh, that is how I'm starting off. The second phase is to actually approach the girls and ask for their number, which is what I actually did before this anxiety is the disorder too. But after the anxiety disorder, I needed to build things up again, courage wise. Uh, so basically, uh, that is the way I'm getting rid of uh, the fear of social rejection. Uh, look up Ja Jeng's TED Talk on YouTube uh, or go to uh, the website Rejection Therapy. If you feel like I am hold back, I feel like something is holding me back and it's fear and I don't know what it is exactly. It's probably the fear of social rejection. And it's a very normal thing to feel, but it, it's not very, um, it's a very normal thing to feel if you look at how people lived in the old days. But if you look at the world now, these rejections are very, very insignificant. So let's get that fear to the level of how significant the rejection is and desensitize ourselves uh, from that uh, fear. Um, another funny story that happened to me, uh, a rejection story, and this is not uh, it's something I was looking for, but life just gave me an opportunity to experience uh, <coughs> a hard rejection uh, by people. Uh, this is what happens. This is a funny story. Someone dropped her ATM card. It was a man, and he was walking with his woman. And I'm sitting outside a coffee place at a table there. I'm standing there, actually, next to the table. And I always leave my phone on the table too. I have this video always running on the background, which I listen to. And he dropped his ATM card. I saw that. What did I do with my stupid head? I grabbed my coffee. I uh, picked up his ATM card. So I walked away from my table. It was a couple of meters away. And I wanted to give his card. But then I realized, shit, what did I do with my stupid head? I was like, shit, I left my phone on the table. So I was like, shit, someone's going to steal my phone. So what did I do? I, I ran back with the ATM card to grab my phone and to come back and to give his ATM card. <coughs> and from the outside, it looked like I was a thief. Because here's a guy running away with an ATM card. So everyone's like, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Oh my god, I was so embarrassed. I wasn't thinking at all. And take in mind, this was at a place where like it's a it's a, it's a narrow street where a lot of people where a lot of stores are and it, like if something out of the ordinary happens, 30 people at least turn their heads. So all these people saw that. So I like I felt so socially rejected uh, rejected because they thought I was a thief and I couldn't convince them otherwise that I wasn't a thief because 
uh, I know how it looked like. If I was in their shoes, I would probably th think the same thing. Like, oh, that's one of those tricks. I'm the, it's the I'm going to grab my phone and then, then I'll just keep running trick. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't it so that was massive social rejection for me <clears throat> um here's another thing i've i've many other stories but i i don't want to make this podcast too long it's my first podcast i want to keep it under 25 minutes uh the last point which i want to talk about is um being rejected and however you want to interpret that, don't take it personally. But if you're still at that stage where you really take it personally, like that person hates me, what I've come to realize is a lot of people that really react negatively to you. Um, this one is huge. Although I'm not spiritual, I've come to find that whatever I feel and think is just reflected back at me. Whatever I project out there, this is, this is one concept spirituality really got down and I do believe in. Like, you ever notice how what you feel and think is just reflected back by the other person, whatever you project? So if you're afraid a person is going to react very negatively, they are. So that one is huge. But here's an opportunity. Being hated, ignored, and rejected is an opportunity to free ourselves from the burden of validation seeking. You know what I mean? Like, so many people are on that constant hamster wheel of needing validation and they, they they lose integrity. Like to, to some degree, they stop being themselves. They laugh at jokes they don't want to laugh about. They talk about things they don't want to talk about. And that is the opportunity to really uh, be free, to free ourselves from the burden of validation seeking. And with, like validation seeking, like you see on social media, you see it a lot. Someone can really be shattered if a lot of people hate them in the comment section. And I can see people reacting in a very negative way when they get hate. But the goal is here to desensitize yourself to rejection. So when someone just says the worst thing about you, you're like, okay, that's your opinion, you're fine. And you're genuinely fine. I'm not talking about people who say, I don't give an F, but actually do. No, I'm talking about you actually don't give an F. You feel like, hey man, I've experienced so much rejection. You got to do better than this to really get, uh, get to me. So... I want to leave you off with, with this quote by Mark Twain, which is really relevant for me. Uh, Do what you fear the most and the death of fear is certain. My name is Payam Carbor. Uh, thank you to uh, for listening to my first podcast and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck. Mm -hmm.